Um, all right, so uh, we've, we've discussed putting your event together. We've discussed the various ways of creating content and delivering it to people. Um, now you've got your show happening. You want to broadcast it a little bit, which uh, means different things now than it's not a big satellite truck driving up uh, and, you know, tons of money and got to be up and down and all this kind of stuff. Um, similarly, as you're capturing the event, as we discussed through recorders, you're going to want to then be able to post those uh, events online for people to watch after the fact. And there's a, there's a bunch of different ways that we can do that. These two devices here on top that Alan will show you are, are Key Pro recorders. They're hard disk recorders. Uh, they're very reliable. We, um, we feed them an input from, or an output from the switcher, and it gets a variety of things it'll get. A lot of times we'll do um, camera ISO, so you, each camera gets recorded individually. We also record the program switch. So you have the final event, and then you also, if you need to re-switch, uh, re-edit something because it didn't go the way you wanted it to for the show, you have that uh, ability. QuickTime is, uh, as you've heard already, the, the format we prefer to use. These numbers should look familiar to you. ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080, 29.97. That's, uh, again, it, we, we like to use those for playback. Similarly, we find that those codecs, or that codec works great for recording. It comes out with a, a nice big file, um, really good resolution. That's another thing to think about. At the end of a several day show, if you've been recording all day, you're going to end up with a ton of data. There are gigs and gigs and gigs. These are 250 gig drives. Um, we recorded our session last week, and we had about half the drive available. And that was about a two hour session, Probably something a less, a little, yeah. little bit less than that. So the, the data adds up quickly. So what we'll usually do is either we will provide or we'll ask, we will ask the client to provide a big, you know, one, two, three terabyte hard drive, depending on how long the show is. And we transfer all the data as we're recording it, and at the end you have a big hard drive full of show. Um, we stream a lot as well now. Uh, streaming, for those who don't know, is if you have an event going on and people can't make it to the event, or you've got, say, uh, an overflow that's nearby but not close enough that it's convenient to run cables to, um, we take the program cut and we put it onto the internet using a program called Livestream. And uh, people can watch the show live. It also records at the same time, so it's a nice little handy-dandy backup. Um, it's an HD signal, 1280 by 720. It's a little less than um, 1920 by 1080. Still looks great. Um, we, we ask that you have uh, an inter internet connection of uh, 10 megabits per second. That covers primarily our main encoding, which is uh, three streams, high, medium, or excuse me, HD, medium, and mobile. What that does is, as the show is happening, the computer captures it and puts out three different streams. So someone on the other end who's watching on, say, the bus on their phone, their phone isn't trying to pull down this high-resolution signal chewing through your data and, and giving you a choppy playback. Your phone knows and goes, oh, I'm going to look at the mobile version. Um, and that, that's something that happens occasionally where you'll, you'll get someone on the other end that says, I, you know, this doesn't look very good, and it's dropping in and out. Turns out they're on an island with some laptop from 1989. If, did they have laptops back then? I don't know. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I'm> <laughs> uh, live stream looks like this. Um, if this was a live show, you would see the event happening here when you go into the live stream page. These are uh, shows that we've done that are hosted that people can just log in and look at. Uh, assuming that's how you set them, you can... You can set them so only certain uh, area code, uh, zip codes can see a show. If you want to, if you want, it's called geo geo locking. Um, you can also set it so certain zip codes are booted. That if you there's certain people you really don't like, and you pa don't want them to watch your show. Protection. Password protection. Why did I say it like that? Password protection. Thank you. Um, that's something you can do as well. Uh, and and then branding. You can we can host these pages on either a completely bare web page, you can have your logos, you can have your colors, you can have anything you want on it. Um, so we can customize it to, to your event. Yes? How does that compare to just simply using Citrix for the webinar? Um, it's uh, a robust platform, um, as I was going to get to right here. Um, as I said, it does record locally. It also records on their servers. Um, Livestream in particular, I can speak to their, their customer services is awesome. 
Um, as things are working, you can, you can actually get a, a tech on the phone to view your stream on their server and, and look at all the metrics as it's going on. But, but you know, you can, there are many different uh, vendors out there who are supplying a, a way to do streaming. We just happen to have gone with live stream. They have the ability to handle you know, many viewers at the same time. In fact, they've done shows for millions of viewers, mm -hmm. uh, not any of ours, but um, so it's just what we've, what we've decided to go with. Yeah, there are many other vendors out there you can use. So it, we have to work on a case-by-case -case basis. Generally, if somebody just says, I'd like to broadcast this event, I want my employees across the world to, to sign in, live stream is an easy way for us to do it. And the hope is that whoever you're going to be interfacing with is familiar with their own system. We've kind of figured out the nuts and bolts of live stream and, and again, what codecs work the best and the, uh, and the most appropriate way to, to set it up. But also you need to educate the people on the other end of your stream that their speed is important. Because I can be sending out a flawless output, but if they're using you know, a shared wireless in a, in, in, at their corporate office, and there's 30 other people watching this the same stream, this, they might be locked into 10 megabits per second, but sharing it between 30 people, they're going to get dropouts and, and freezing and so on. So that would explain why sometimes you, you know you're sending a pristine yes. signal, yep. but then in the comments, somebody says, mm -hmm. there's always oh somebody. my God, I can't read that yes. slide. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. right. I'm yeah, watching this on my iPhone 2, and it right, looks garbage. Right, <laughs> right because so for instance, right. So for instance, live stream, so we upload to live stream. Right. It tells us when, you know, it tells us our signal is good. It's the software is designed to sort of read everything. Live stream receives it wherever they receive it, somewhere in the cloud, and they disseminate it to servers across the, across the world. So multiple servers are transmitting the stream at the same time. So we know it's, it's being broadcast all over, the, all over the world. So then whenever there's an issue locally, from somebody's receiving site, it's because their internet is clogged up in some way. So more often than not, what we try to do or to suggest is to sort of corral everyone in an auditorium <laughs> and use one computer with a projector or something like that, which we can provide. That's which a is a good convenient. idea, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and, and do it like that. So basically you know everyone's you know, in one spot and not to bogging down the bandwidth. So we're, we're now going to talk about recording um, and uploading your files uh, typically as, as the presentations are still going along. So some, some clients have you know, a media server site on their website where all of their past meetings are hosted, basically like a YouTube site or, or something like that. Usually it's locked down with a password. Um, but we do get clients who come to us and say, I need you to record our event and then upload it to our site. And that's what Nick's speaking And a lot about. of times what we'll do is we'll actually alternate. We'll, we'll have a, a recording computer that will do a session and as the, possibly even between presenters, we'll stop and restart the recording, hand off that file to another computer and start that upload so that essentially by the end of a session or maybe you know, a half an hour after the session, you've got the whole thing available for the people that couldn't come to your event. So that can be, uh, that can be very convenient. Um, something to watch out for while when you're doing that kind of thing is uh, file name protocol. You want to have a plan so you don't have Tuesday 10 a.m video, but it's actually Wednesday, 2 p.m., et cetera. And that can, that can kind of get lost uh, quickly if, if you have a tech who maybe doesn't, you know, doesn't have a plan. They're saying, well, name this what seems appropriate. So usually what we'll do is we'll, we'll write something up that um, is sort of a, a standard procedure that whoever's doing the recording and the uploading will follow. So the names are always right and they always show up in the right place. Um, so you don't get lost. Ah, I really <laughs> That's all, folks. Yes. Barring some questions, which we would love to field right yes. now. Thank you. 